Hello, and welcome to the premiere episode of Movie Dumpster. Today we're talking Rawhead Rex, directed by George Pavlou from 1986. I'm Joe Lascola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Connor McGraw. Welcome to the dumpster. Rawhead. That's what they called him. Rawhead! Um, I had not really seen this movie in its entirety until today. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've seen this movie about 30 times. So, so last night makes 31 for me. I'm with you, Connor. I actually never saw this movie other than the occasional clip Joe would send me to say, hey, I'm talking about this thing. This movie has popped up on my radar for like 10 years, ever since I like started really getting into horror movies. Okay, maybe like maybe 15 years. Um, like on list with like Evil Dead and the crap. And I just kept seeing pictures of this monster going like, huh. And then just never bothering. And then Rawhead Rex is at the bottom of that list. <laughs> <laughs> the Clive Barker bastard child. <laughs> I I just want to get this out of the way. I, I would say this movie really falls off the rails, but I don't think it was ever on any. Because this is the most presumptuous horror movie I've ever seen in my life. So so those, for those of you not familiar, you know, this was a short story written by Clive Barker in his Books of Blood uh, volumes, right? So somehow the movie got made and he actually wrote the screenplay and then this clusterfuck happened. I'm pretty sure he like disowned this movie, didn't he? I think he did. I was just reading on his site like he wasn't even invited to the set. They ignored him completely. It shows. I mean, look at the, <laughs> look at the monster. <laughs> I mean, the, without getting ahead of ourselves, I always thought the funniest thing about the monster uh, was, you know, it had this like really interesting like animatronic face. But anytime it would go to attack somebody, it had the most ridiculous Benny Hill run that I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah. Just waiting for that fucking saxophone to jack up like. Well, it doesn't help yeah. that it seems to just raspberry people to death. Yeah. Oh yeah, all he's, it does—it like, just pushes his face against things and goes, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's fucking motorboating people in the neck, and they're just like, oh god. And they had they had one di- like effect design for bites, and they stuck with it. Everyone gets a oh, bite yeah. on the lower chin and upper neck area. Yeah, there was like one mold, and they're like, fuck it, we're just gonna just put it <laughs> on everybody. And it's like you never see like any body part besides the head. It's the only thing that he ever like carries around with him. Everything else is just like, oh, there they are with a, a huge gape in their neck. But it's a fucking head from like two bodies ago. And you're like, wait, why do you have that head and not the head of the guy that you just fucking killed? It also doesn't help that he looks like he looks like the horse head mask if someone just stuck some Halloween teeth on it. <laughs> yeah, with, with, with a good Gene Simmons take costume. It seriously yeah, at all. He, he, he looks like Gene Simmons fucked a hairless gorilla. <laughs> Or like Goro from Mortal Kombat. Shit, Goro's pretty advanced fucking puppetry, apparently. Well, compared to this, yeah. (laughs) Also, why was he like, why was he a bot? He looked like a bodybuilder with a Halloween mask on. Uh, I like just to go right from the beginning of the movie. Like this, you you just tossed into this weirdo scenario of farmers digging up what looks like Rita Repulsa's container from the Power Rangers. And you don't know why, you don't know where it came from. You're just like, ah, here we go. And then slam cut to a church, everybody's screaming hallelujah, and then slam cut back to them digging this pillar up. Oh, yeah, man. Okay, so <laughs> well, wait, hold on. One, so, one thing right. before all that, though. Let, let's, jump, let's jump in right from the beginning. With you this have thing. the opening credits, which have the greatest typeface known to man being used for all of the names and... Uh, you know, it's Papyrus, of course. As a graphic designer, I just found that horrible right from the start. <laughs> Mind you, they have this incredibly ominous music playing while it's literally just the main character, Howard, driving down the road smoking a cigarette. Like, I don't know what's so ominous about this. <laughs> Howard Hallenbeck. The music's a whole nother fucking ball of wax because it's like, this does not, the, the score for this movie doesn't belong anywhere where it's put. You know what I mean? Like, there's just, like, long scores of of scenes happening, and there's no music. And then all of a sudden, we have this mundane scene of somebody doing something totally irreverent to the plot. And it's like... Which seems to be, like, it's all the beginning, too. And like I said, there's just... It's just just a bunch of, like, yucks just digging up this pillar, and they seem really... One guy's really committed to it. I don't know why. How did you... Was this thing buried all over the top? Do they lift it from the ground? What is this? So Farmer John's tilling his land, right? And he's got this giant dick sticking out of the dirt. 
and he's trying to move it, and he's like, oh, I, I can't move this fucking dick out of the ground. Fucking and, uh, shite, it's messing me in potatoes. Ah, fucking shite. But, but the thing that gets me is he has the two guys with the car that can't even move this thing, but then he's still going to stand there. Ah, all right, I think I can get it, and he's sitting there with the with the and he shovel. Po- and he pokes it with a fucking stick. Like... <laughs> Like you, they're they're like they literally got a rope wrapped around this huge fucking cock, and it's and they're they're trying to pull it over, and then they're like, ah, uh, my dinner's waiting on the table, and they fucking leave, and then he comes back over and just sticks a fucking stick underneath it, and it just cracks it cracks wide open. And then he get, he hit a he hit a pocket of uh, dry ice, and some oh, yeah. magic tomfoolery happens. The mist of misogyny pours out of the ground. <laughs> When the fucking lightning hits this giant dick monument, it turns beet red. And it's just like, oh, supercharged testosterone. I just read that this movie was basically, this story was basically just supposed to be like a giant 10 foot just prick running around uh, who's then defeated by the the intensity of female sexuality. And none of that is in the movie. <laughs> well, it is there a little bit. So, so all right, so let's get to our characters. So Howard Hollenbeck is our main character and he's on vacation in Ireland with his family. Well, now, hold on. This is a work trip. He might, he, oh. he, rewi- he reminds <laughs> yeah, his wife of that. He's here twice. for the sights. He, I don't know what sights yeah. he's looking for, but he's here for the sights. He's writing a book. There's, there's no fucking fun for you or the kids. Just shut up and this is what we're going to do. By the way, his son is a piece of shit. Yeah, he's a piece of shit, yeah. And he's annoying as hell. He's and annoying he, as he, hell. He, and, and he's got the, the, these two little Irish actor kids trying to do their best American accent. These poor kids. That I did hear that at the beginning because, like, I think they're fighting, and I was like, "Wait a minute, his kid's American," and he was totally just the Irish came full out. Oh, they're slip sliding all over the place with their accents. It, it was as bad as Sansa Stark's American accent in the third X Men movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's his face's accent? He's, sometimes he sounded like he was Mayor Quimby from The Simpsons. Uh, Howard. Yeah. Oh yeah, I yeah. Can yeah. See that. <laughs> it slips every now and then. That, yeah, and then, like this, like I said, this movie is so they 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 hold all the cards from you as far as any kind of an- plot answers until like the third act. Until then, you're just like, huh? Yeah, but then they just like rush it together. Like, yeah, I fucking guess so. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. They do like a, they do like a five minute lore dump, and it just doesn't make any sense. No, not at all. So, so Howard's there and he, to, to take photographs uh, because he has suspicions that there's a fertility cult in the area, in this particular area of Ireland, and he's, I guess, researching it and taking awful photographs. Yeah, and that's the first and last you hear of this fertility cult, too. <laughs> so, like, so, like you were saying, Connor, like, we go from this giant dick in the ground and cutting back and forth to uh, Declan O'Brien, who, who's running the church. Well, that's also the first scene, you know, Rex comes out of the ground. And oh, that's yeah. the first thing you kind of get this, like, clear that something's... I mean, besides the fact that this giant monster just came out of the ground, that there's something up where they have this altar that anytime anyone touches it, they have, like, this burning sensation on their hand. And it's kind of like the beginning of, like, a bigger thing that they come back to a few times. But at first, it's just like, okay, like... He seems to also touch it completely unprovoked. He's like, huh. And then just puts his hand down and starts shrieking. Yeah, I mean, he sees the woman, like, with... I guess she dropped a glass or something in that area. Yeah. And he's, he almost has, like, a look like, oh, could it be? Yeah. And then, you know, of course, he touches it for way too long. <laughs> During the, the service, he's got this saucy look on his face. He's, like, making bedroom eyes at this woman across the way. <laughs> Also, this 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 church with the very uh, obvious uh, demon in the stained glass window. Why is it there? Yeah, it's kind of what I was thinking from the beginning. I was like, "Come on, like no one figured this out in the first half hour." So, so Reverend Coot, right? And he, yes, he's fucking old. He's an old coot. We get it. Howard goes to see him because he wants to find out more about the site that the church was built on because he thinks like the ancient fertility cult could have been there, and you know, it's all it's all pagan uh, belief system and stuff like that. So. You have this church that that Coot like says it was rebuilt like six or seven times through like the eighteen hundreds, and they just kept this stained glass, and everybody <laughs> forgot what it was about. They were just like, "Hey, I guess we'll put the fucking monster glass back in the hole." <laughs> This looks like it belongs right here. Let's put the whole glass back except for that one little piece that tells you how to defeat Raw. <laughs> right, yeah. And then we just and then we just kind of derail right into like Monster in the Loose shenanigans yeah, for like Yeah, that, that first minutes. kill is is really interesting to me because you have this guy who's like some kind of farmer and you know they play up the shtick, "Oh, well that that door's open. Oh, oh, I thought I locked it. Let me go check it out." You know, it looks like a bear attack. Like who is honestly going to go in there and check that out after they see that? Yeah. And then the next thing that was like probably, I mean, I might have said that something else was already the funniest thing in the movie, but this was the funniest thing in the movie. Why is Rex in that shed, hiding behind a bunch of crates. Egg crates, by the way. <laughs> like, like, like cardboard. <laughs> for 40 seconds. I, no, I picked up that. This, this seven foot five 
fucking horse head demon sneaks up on like 15 people in this movie oh yeah yeah and i i mean i will say that i kind of enjoyed the uh the back and forth of the editing of him kind of like looking around and then the wife it cuts back to her cutting up the dinner with the steak and everything yeah. it's like all right i laying on a little thick here but so he bursts out of these eggs crates like surprise i spoke you <laughs> and then like and then gives this guy a noogie and he dies <laughs> Again, one mold, always go for the chin and the neck, and then oh, he just drops yeah, him dead. That's it. Okay, uh, just put the puppet in front of the neck, and we'll just squirt some blood on it, and we're good. It, it, cut. So Rawhead kills that guy, and then goes right after his wife, and, like, punches a fucking hole in the window. And she and she's pregnant, by the way, and she, she, uh, she runs away upstairs. Yeah, upstairs, the worst place possible but to run. Right before that happens, they do that shot where it's kind of like the Evil Dead camera shot, where it's like the camera is approaching the window. It has the complete opposite effect, because it looks like it's just taking its sweet time. Absolutely, and everybody running away from Rawhead in this movie, they fucking leave every door open when they run through it. They're like, oh, he's coming? Okay. And they leave the fucking door open and they run to the next thing. They keep putting themselves into bigger boxes. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Like, every time that they get, you have a shot from the monster's perspective, it is that slow, slumbering walk. But every time that he's actually in a scene going after somebody, he is sprinting at them. He is so gunning it at everybody. <laughs> it just doesn't add up. And then, yeah, this woman, the wife runs upstairs, locks herself in the bedroom, and then immediately goes to unlock the door. Yeah. Oh, almost know. instantaneously. I don't get that part. And this fucking, this this pagan god hates fucking housewares, man. He, he's like, oh, someone else to kill. And he gets in the kitchen and stops to beat up a bag of flour. Yeah, plates, he's like. <laughs> cups, <laughs> table, shelves. He, he's like smashing the china, just like, where's my fucking dinner? Dinner. <laughs> ah, it should have been ready when I got home from work. <laughs> he's only been waiting 200 years. Well, he's he's the god of, uh, of the fucking patriarchy, man. Like, like <laughs> that's what he does. I, yeah, I guess that's supposed to be what it is. Yeah. I mean, he's just like a walking fucking boner. Yeah, and I mean, you get to the scene where he finally catches up to the woman, and he, and he sees that she's pregnant, and you kind of don't find out for a while, but spoilers, she lives. Well, yeah, the reason he doesn't attack her is because she's A, a woman, and B, she's pregnant. And he's afraid of that, which I didn't pick up on first because I guess I just didn't catch the whole fertility uh, cult thing. So I was like so confused by that. Dude, it's fucking blink and you miss it. He's like, yeah, I'm, um, I'm researching. Yeah, I'm here for the fertility. Uh, hey, this window. Well, then, like, I, I like from here, it just, I, it's like a, a fucking, it's like a fever dream. Like he goes from there, and then I can't remember how, but then like, what do we get to? Uh, we have the next scene. I think isn't he? He's just he's just dragging his fucking farmer around for like twenty five minutes too. He's like he's taking little nips out of him, just like stripping him. All right. So before before we jump into that, <laughs> so you think he's gonna kill this woman, and he and and he doesn't. But the scene cuts, and he roars, and then the scene cuts back to Howard and his wife, and they're like walking down some street in Ireland, and the wife hears the misogyny. From miles away. <laughs> yeah, right before they make out for 30 seconds. Yeah, and he's like, oh, you haven't kissed me like that in a long time. There were way too many uncomfortable close-ups of people kissing in this movie. They're getting into it. I mean, there's some tongue yeah. going down that throat. I mean, we're, we're licking tonsils left and right. And then they have uh, this little old lady. I mean, this street, I would imagine, is a little bigger than a, a, a two-person uh, walkway. She just waits for them to finish to push in between them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they call back to that later in the movie, but I was like, okay. Do they call back to that because uh I, yeah i mean do they I, I missed it entirely i didn't notice that uh, because I'll, i was like why doesn't this go anywhere when we get towards the end of the movie i'll tell you where it comes okay. back in i honest i forget where this goes from that moment but like i said there's scenes of him just dragging this first farmer around that he killed just repeatedly he's just he's dragging him by the ankles everywhere yeah i mean he drags him through the trailer park where you start to get into that part of the movie where you have this little kid and his like older brother who's trying to get laid you know he's sitting there playing with his oh. army man oh yeah yeah this guy's trying to get his fucking dick wet, like, right in front of his little brother. And it's just disgusting. It's really weird. He's, like, licking her chin. What are you going to do? Like, are you going to just, like, fuck your girlfriend, like, right in front of your yeah, little exactly. brother playing with his army men? And you can't send him to his room. You're in one room. Yeah, it's, it's just one room. And he's like, hash, <laughs> ah, shut up and watch the movie. He's like, I saw this one he's already. Like, I've seen it already. <laughs> I've seen, I seen it. And, yeah, then, you know, they leave. And, of course, you know, you already know as the viewer that Rex is in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. So, so he gets all pissed off and they, and they leave the trail. And apparently uh, the trailers in Ireland uh, lock from the outside and the kid can't get out. Um, yeah. And then, you know, the, the brother takes the toy from him. It's yeah. like a little light up, you know, uh, character. Robot. He, 
you know, throws it on the floor, but of course Rawhead comes in and checks it out. He doesn't like it too much. Takes a little foot to it. Yeah, so so Rawhead hates housewares, women, babies, and uh, robot toys. Yeah, and like, this is, yeah, th- okay, yeah, so this is where he has that, that dude just strung up, and he's just like ripping tatters of clothes off of him, and just like, again, like going, brrr, like on his neck, and just, I don't know, not doing anything to this guy he's been dragging around for two hours. Nope. But you think he'd, like, eat his dick or his balls or something? <laughs> he would do something. What, why do you have him? He's like the Wendigo. He, like, eats the balls and the dick, and he becomes more of a giant cuck. I don't know why your brain goes right to that, but, I mean, based on the giant rock penis, I guess I could see where you're coming from. It's funny. I guess it's funny because it's supposed to be, like, it's supposed to be the subtext, and it's just all over the place. Yeah. No, it is. It's just, like, it's like, ah, oh, I gotta eat men. I got. I need my man meat. I hate women. Ah. I mean, to be fair, he does kill a lot of women in this movie. Uh, well, he, no, actually, not really. here's no, here's who kills a lot of people in this movie. That one asshole with a gun. Yeah. Who, oh, yes, who blows true. up half the trailer park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is arguably the best scene of the whole fucking movie. The most expensive scene. The most not. expensive scene. <laughs> So, so these two, so these two leave their trailer, right? And the, 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 this guy's, and then this is intercut with, 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 um, with the guy hanging up from the tree. Which is weird because they just, they kick the boy out. Why'd they leave the trailer? No, man, they leave, they lock him in the trailer. That's what I'm saying. Like, do oh, they, okay, the trailers right. lock from the outside? Like, what's happening here? I guess, like, taking your girlfriend outside to try to have sex with her in the cold forest is more, uh, advantageous than trying to fuck her in front of your brother in your one room trailer so that's what they do everyone is very overdressed like they're obviously dressed for like crappy ass weather and they're outside sucking face in like this dense cold like uncomfortable clammy looking woods oh yeah and she's not having any of it you know he she just you know she just wanted to talk to him because i guess she doesn't think the relationship's going well <laughs> and he's just like ah shut up i just want to get into your panties yeah and every time they hear rawhead scream he's like oh i didn't hear anything what are you uh, talking about it, it just it was the fucking wind don't worry about it that was something else i was just like laughing at the amount of like just silly horror tropes that were on this movie because i guess like barker had something a little more not like not like abstract in mind but he was like this is just 1950s monster and a rampage stupidity and that's it yeah but but is it <laughs> i mean maybe it could have been so these kids are, are making out against this tree and i guess like rawhead can smell a boner a mile away <laughs> and uh they they hear something and they start to run away. But before they start running, they, they, Andy's got to zip it up. Oh yeah, Andy takes the time to do that. He literally zips. The, you hear like the zipper sound effect and all, and it's like what what is happening? <laughs> um, and then they have another cliche right after that. Uh, just like Connor was saying, you know, the girl and the the boyfriend are running and running in the woods, and they, they, there's a clear pathway that's coming through. And it's like okay, well that's where Rawhead's stepping out. They oh keep yeah, running. That's where Rawhead's stepping out. They keep up oh, there. He is. Yep. And then, you know, of course, he, he he comes at them, and then the girl keeps running, keeps yeah. running, well, keeps well, running. I mean, the camera, like, goes, like, right from raw head vision right to the arm, and obviously he fucking took a big hunk out of that shit. So then she runs right out of the woods, and she runs up to all the people in the in the trailer park because the little kid had gone to uh, the other the other trailers to, like, warn everybody, but he can't fucking talk because now he's, like, catatonic. Oh, yeah, and this is where they're like, what's wrong? And she's like, oh, Andy? And then she, like, lifts up her hand. She's holding his severed hand, which I laughed at because I'm like, you don't, you can't tell that you're, like, you, you don't know what a human weight feels like? Yeah, there's no weight to it. <laughs> like, it's just a hand. I just thought that was so cliche, and I was, like, saw it a mile away. I mean, I guess, what do you really expect, but... <laughs> It was, look, no one's going to do it better than they did in Jurassic Park, right? No, not at all. Well, uh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, Mr. Arnold. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, we're fully functional again. (laughs) (laughs) So then the next scene you have, you know, Howard. Oh, I can't sleep. He's up, you know, and they have him and his wife have some more intimate talk. Yeah. uh, Before he goes out for a cigarette and a walk. And, of course, he sees Rawhead. Well, he hears all the hubbub from from, uh, the trailer park. And the cops are there and all that. Or they're going by, right? Yeah, and he's out there walking around, and he sees uh, Rawhead standing there, and he kind of does, like, a double take, and, of course, then he's gone again. And he's standing on a hill, like, with a trophy head, like, just staring at <laughs> like, <laughs> like the predator or something. So then we go back to the house uh, where where the guy was killed behind the egg crates. He's got his neck nibbled. We're introduced to uh, Inspector Gissing and, and his sidekick, and um, the police work is fucking non-existent <laughs> gissing walks up with like a cigar and he's like ah must have been a revenge killing and the guy's like what are you fucking you talking about and he's like nah <laughs> it was a revenge killing i'm telling you case closed everybody go home he's like oh it must be more than one person yeah. we're looking for here. yeah he's like ah seven people did this and i'm thinking to myself like did they like 
this happened probably like six hours ago. If it was one person, like, they had the time to, like, trash this place. Not to mention, there's a big fucking claw mark scratched into the door. I was just gonna get to this, like, when Howard eventually goes to the police and says, like, I saw some, they're like, ah, the darkness can be deceiving. I'm like, you have a dead body in a wrecked house. Like, <laughs> it was just, it was just some fucking cattle on the ridge there. That's what I'm saying, like, they go to this place, they do, like, zero detective work, <laughs> to totally dismiss it, there's fucking claw marks all over the place, this place is, it looks like a wild animal hit this fucking kitchen. And everyone's so nonplussed by it, they're just sifting through it, like, yeah, look at that, some broken down doors. The only guy that seems to believe Howard is, like, the, uh, I'll, I'll just call him the deputy, because I don't know what his actual name was. Yeah, I don't, I totally forget. But the chief is just, like shakes his head and puts his cigarette out in the guy's coffee it's like okay oh yeah yeah so when howard goes to see him he's like he's like oh you know there's something out there man and then howard does the most uh, another extremely cliche thing ah yeah you don't believe yeah. me no, no, i'm yeah. not filling out a report and he's like ah fine you don't believe me whatever i'll just go take care of it myself but like really what is howard gonna do he's like an american like writer who's taking photos he's american photographer who wears a- he wears a sweater. <laughs> it's a- it's a nice sweater, I like it, but I don't even know what the fuck his motivation is. Like, he's just like, oh, there's a monster out there, and we gotta do something about it. He is the most non-threatening horror movie protagonist I've ever seen. They're literally making this film up as they go. Like, they shot a bunch of monster shit, and they're like, oh, fuck, how do we string this together? Oh, wow, this has to be an actual movie. Then we get to the second trailer park attack. <laughs> Do we, is it the second right? trailer part? Well, there's a is couple this, things in between. Yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some filler in between it. Yeah, yeah. There's, a little, there's a little bit of a uh, quote-unquote story Yeah, they, they, the Howard goes back to the church, and now Declan's kind of like... Oh, God, this is... Which I don't know if we mentioned before, but Declan kind of gets possessed. Oh, yes. We did, we by totally uh, Rawhead, or... I mean, it's kind of debatable if he's possessed by him because he touches the altar or if he's like enamored by him like you don't really he just be, he just becomes a super fan like all of a sudden and just it, he goes from zero to crazy in two seconds i feel like this guy like thinks like jesus and god let him down and now that like when he after he touches the altar because when you touch the altar you get like this vision guess that you see what some, he sees i yeah, guess well yeah. he, he set up some kind of telepathic link and you know i don't know you're right like i don't know if he's enamored by him or he's uh hypnotized by him because that actually happens later in the movie yeah, and you you basically, like, Howard goes back there to take some photos. Um, this time he takes a Polaroid conveniently because after he takes all these pictures and puts them in his pocket, Declan comes up behind him and, you know, acts like he bumps into him, drops the camera, and then stomps it out. Yeah. And uh, it's actually, I think, the first time in the movie where they <laughs> cursed... And not that I was surprised by it, but because the flurry of fucks that came oh. after that, I was, like, so <laughs> taken aback. It's jarring, man. It's they jarring. Do. They start. They start throwing F-bombs at each other like they're getting into an actual shoot fight. That fuck starts flying like crazy. Except from that point on, like, everybody's throwing. They're like, ah, oh, you fucker. Fuck you. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah, fuck but, this. Yeah, and I mean, then the movie, like, I don't know. It's, it's pretty tame in the sense, like, every time that someone gets killed, it is just to the jugular, and that's kind of all you really see. Whereas, like, at that point on, I feel like they were like, okay, this is when the real movie starts, right here. Yeah, because after this, we get uh, a little bit more gore, we get uh, really unnecessary nudity, and just more F-bombs left and right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's get right let's get right to that next trailer park scene, because I think that's what happens before. It just, he just comes back to the trailer park, because like, we just we see four more fucking meat sacks who are just waiting for him to come knock on the door. Literally, he comes knocking on the back of the trailer, like, pounding on it. Howard has this revelation, he's like, ah, ah he's territorial, he's territorial. And it's like, is the entirety of fucking Ireland his territory? Well, also, I mean, Howard's also on a bigger kick on it now because before Rawhead attacks for the, 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 the trailer park the second time, uh, Howard's like ready to leave. He leaves with his family to go to Dublin. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, okay, uh, wait, okay, this is when the kid dies. Yeah. So this happens oh, before God, the trailer this park. Oh, God, so funny. Yeah, so he's got the two kids and uh, they're driving and the little girl has to go to the bathroom. So they stop and, uh, you know... They're going to let the little girl go on her own. And I'm sitting there thinking, isn't there a murderer on the loose? Why are they going to let this little girl go off on her own to go to the bathroom? Do they know that, though? Well, Howard does. Well, Howard saw the monster. He doesn't know that people are dying, though. I don't think. Uh, he knows. Does he? That's why he goes with her. But, yeah. you know, she screams and, you know, Howard runs out there. And then the wife leaves the son in the car and she runs out there. And it's just a dead rabbit. 
Yeah, what was the purpose? Why did both parents have to leave the car on the fucking, in the middle of the road, by the way? Leaving their nine-year-old son in the car, and then Rawhead, like, seemingly just teleports by the car. <laughs> he, he fucking Jason Voorhees is right next to the car, <laughs> and he's just like, oh, kid, shout it out loud, and he grabs him by the fucking ankle. Well, no, okay, he doesn't just grab him by the ankle. This is my favorite part of this whole sequence. We have seen this, this thing bust down doors, break walls, break glass, bust everything down, and then he sees him by the window bypasses the car window and goes in the open front door of the car <laughs> it was like the one prop they had that they couldn't destroy they're like all right we can't fuck this car up we need it so we're just gonna we're just gonna conveniently leave that door open so you can get that kid back there he just wanted to he just wanted to read his copy of secret wars was he really i wasn't paying attention to what he was reading maybe that's why raw head went in there he's like i need a little re reading material i gotta cool off a little he's like ah oh, man i fucking love that art give me that what a porky he's not reading the new secret wars new secret wars is great <laughs> i haven't actually read that new secret wars is pretty fun that's you know going back to what you were getting into so then that's you know howard's back in town uh you yeah know, they, so they, they start to, to have some more evidence of that rex is actually who they think he is and then he attacks that trailer park again he goes in to see gissing again and he's like he's like you know my son's dead you know what the fuck are you gonna do about it and he's like i don't know we're doing all we can to do what we can and he's like uh i fucking saw something on that moor and 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 you didn't do anything the first time and now he's gone okay actually one more one more thing about the, the attack on his son after Rawhead kills his son completely off screen with just a squelching sound effect, uh, Howard runs up to the car, screams in agony, and then closes the car door and then runs off in search of his son. <laughs> he like he could have prevented this. There's a gate that he looks that he seemingly looks like he can't get out of, and he just stops. He's like, no. And then he watches his son die, and then just slips right around the gate and runs right to the car. I don't know. Maybe they didn't get insurance on the car. They had to make sure they didn't get any dings in it. Yeah, I guess. He's like, my boy. The car body's okay. My boy. That's that, that scene reminded me a lot of Pet Cemetery, where it's like the scene when the little boy dies. It's like, you know, the shoe, yeah. you know, all the parents are just not paying attention to him in that one particular scene. And then, of course, that's when they die. And it's like a totally crazy situation where it's like, you know, in Pet Cemetery, they play up that whole idea with the, you know, they have these huge tractor trailers going down the road continuously. But the yeah. one time that one's flying down the street mm -hmm. is the time they lose, uh, you know, they can't get to him in time. So, you know, same thing with this thing where it's like, well, this guy's out here and I saw him and I know he killed people, but... The one time I'm not near my son is when he gets killed by it. And well, it's like, all right, come well, on. Yeah, the odds are higher to get killed by a pagan god than it is to get hit by a Mac truck. Oh, that's true. Is what it is. Yeah, especially living in this little, like, this little tiny village in Ireland where he just walks in circles, it seems. <laughs> that, that's what he does. Because then he's, again, he circles right back to this trailer park where hilarity ensues. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the three sets that they had available to them. Yeah, so he comes back to Texas trailer park. He flips it upside down. Uh, the trailer that these four losers are in. Yeah, they're like watching a movie and like falling asleep. Oh no, he's the the guy Bill is telling the story. And he's like, and then they found a body. I could smell the blood. Oh my god, you, you can. And that was English. That wasn't Irish. So whatever. Yeah, and of course the old guy. He's the only the one they send to try to get out of it. And of course he's immediately killed. Yeah, and then there's just this young chick sitting in the corner, and we, I'm not sure who she is. Like, is, is she like? The daughter of the couple that they have over? Or the girlfriend of the guy with the very uh, intense eyebrows. Oh, the werewolf? No, he's a <laughs> werewolf, man. His eyebrows meet in the middle. I mean, haven't you ever seen Company of Wolves? It's it's that guy. I have not, but his that mullet was crazy, and his eyebrows were like attack eyebrows. Oh, man, that guy's sprouting fur and fucking howling at the moon. Yeah, but this girl gets, like, she gets pulled out of a window by Rawhead, who is already pulling her top off, and then werewolf man reaches over and just finishes the job, grabs the dress, and rips off. Expo she has no underwear on apparently yeah instead of grabbing her arm and we get the most like some of the most gratuitous nudie i've ever seen just for the sake of having it it seems <laughs> instead of grabbing like an extremity he just literally grabs for her chest and rips her fucking dress off <laughs> And the boobies go flying, and it's like, what? And then she gets thrown against a tree and dies, it seems. I don't know what happens to her. She gets tossed the tree and then just, like, passes out or something. I don't think she dies, man. See, that's well, no, she, Well, here's the thing. She absolutely does, because then here comes this idiot with a rifle. Oh, yeah. Who takes a shot. What, does he miss the first one? I think he hits Rex once. And then and then his his second shot is probably the most, the luckiest and unluckiest shot in the history of film. Because he, <laughs> misses, he misses the ten-foot-tall uh, horse demon, pagan god, whatever the fuck, hits the tippy-top of a gas canister 
coaster and blows up half the trailer park. Oh, yeah. It's gone. Like, they were all hooked up to one <laughs> gas one tank gas or tank. oil tank. So I'm assuming everyone in that vicinity does. And then Rawhead, seemingly unaffected by it, sprints like a decathlete up to this guy and wrecks his shit. Yeah, like, oh, how yeah. dare you try to blow me up? <laughs> yeah. And when, he, and when he runs at him, his fucking head's, like, bobbing all over the place. Like, the, 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 be- the effects are so fucking bad in this shot. Like, you can see, like, the guy in the suit, like, tilt his head up so he can see out of the fucking mouth of the mask. He's doing very, like, Michael Keaton Batman things where you can tell he can't move his neck. So he's just, like, stiffly moving his shoulders left and right. <laughs> but but that he's running like an anime character. Yeah, somebody cut me an air hole. And then he gets that guy with the rifle and then just, like, starts choking him to death. I'm like, you are, you are ten feet of claws and teeth, and for some reason, your, your method of killing people is to just smother them. Either, either throwing them or choking them or blowing raspberries on their necks. So the next scene, I think... Is uh, all the cops show up? Well, no. The next scene we go, we go back to the police station, and Howard's in there, and he's talking to Gissing again. You know, number two busts in, and he's like, "Oh, the boy started talking, and he drew this. He gave him some pen and paper to play with, and it's like the worst fucking drawing ever." And Gissing takes it, and he's it's like, an eye, "It's it's eyes and like maybe some like some some pointy lines for teeth." And Gissing's like, "Guess he's like mother of God." Like it's the shitty like concept art that that they that the director had, and he was like, "No, it's supposed to look like this." And the guy and Gissing takes it, and he's like, "He's like, oh my God, this is horrible. This is the worst thing I've ever seen." It's a straight up version of like the Deadpool thing where he's like, have you seen this man? It's just a crude ass drawing of Deadpool shooting Francis. Except it take, it's taken totally seriously. It's the evil doodle from Spongebob and he's fucking running around going, e <laughs> And then Giss- and Gissing's like, oh yes, well it turns out there's a monster and then they, they repeat that darkness can be deceiving with lots of sarcasm. This is where his accent was slipping into what sounded like Mayor Quimby. He was like, I'll go find it myself. I'll do that for you. I'm gonna get that roll ahead. Yeah, he killed my boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you, so you have like you have like four fucking murders and then a child murder and then this guy claiming that he's seen this monster and then it took a fucking doodle for him to be like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. There is something out there. Not to mention the stained glass window in the church that looks exactly like it. By the way, I hope we're not offending any Irish people out there, but. <laughs> well, I'm Irish and I'm I, not offended. I don't, yeah, I, my name's Connor Seamus McGraw. I can kind of get away with it. All right, wait, I'm Italian, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. I apologize. It's for the fun of the of the, of the podcast, okay? Yeah, yeah. So then the chief, I keep forgetting his name. What is his name again? Gissing. Gissing. Uh, they get to the trailer park. Gissing my balls. <laughs> <laughs> and Rawhead's already gone. So, you know, they book it trying to find him. And, of course, oh, you know, they, they have the scene where, oh, I think we went too far. Oh, he could have never gone this far on, on foot. foot. Yeah. And, you know, what happens next. Of course, he's right at the window sh- punching it out. <laughs> <laughs> but he punches that fucking car window out. Yeah, but, but not I, the not the rental because that's a rental. We got to give that back. Well, think about it this way: you know, they they do some damage to those cop cars soon after this, so maybe they didn't have to uh, return that when they were finished. Oh, because that was the one they were going to blow up. Yeah. Um. But then they have a scene after that where uh, <clears throat> Rawhead takes Gissing, and he actually doesn't kill him, but no. he does hypnotize him, which is the first time that you actually see this on camera. Meanwhile, the uh, deputy is driving away and, you know, hits a curb and just kills himself, essentially. <laughs> he hits, like, a mound of dirt, and the car goes up on its side, and, like, the windshield doesn't crack. It just falls off. It just falls to the side. <laughs> the whole piece of glass, it just slides off the front of the car and gingerly hits the ground. The director is probably like, all right, this is going to be great. You know, we're going to hit this mound. The car's going to, like, flip over and, and do all this crazy shit. It looks like it hits a fucking speed bump and then falls on its side. <laughs> it just flips over. Our cue that he's dead is that he screams the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that's I'm like that crash is totally survivable, man. You know, he could he could have bumped his head and got like an aneurysm or something. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. His foot got caught in the brake pedal and he just twisted his ankle and he's screaming the whole time. Yeah, it's just sprained. Everyone's like, oh, he's dead. No, get me out of here. <laughs> oh no, you're gone. <laughs> that's all right, you're gonna get blown up in a second. And then, yeah, he I guess he recruits kissing or something the, cl- the close-ups were hilarious because it's like i guess it's supposed to be doing something i'm like that mask is not moving uh well the animatronic I, again like the animatronic stuff is, is kind of cool like it kind of looks good like i i, I like it I, I think it looks good on certain angles but anytime yeah. the mouth moves it just looks like a little too freaky it looks like he can't close his mouth well right. he's got well he's got a little mouth inside the big mouth oh he does Wait. i i thought he yeah. did i wasn't sure Ah. Yeah, yeah, he's got a, he's got like that he's got that xenomorph thing going on, but it doesn't extend. Okay, I thought that's what it was. I, it, it because the lighting in this movie is you know kind of shit at some point. So every time he opens his mouth, I'm like, is that some, is that something else in there? I think I didn't see it until the very end. See, like, why didn't David create Rawhead? 
<laughs> like that would have been good. Like if it was it was alien rawhead uh, rex. The, what you, are you trying to launch the rawhead rex cinematic universe? Is that what you're doing, dude? I'm telling you, man, it's not a bad idea. Like let let's just like let's dump the xenomorph and now it's rawhead rex. Well, rawhead's not a pagan god, everybody. He is actually a protomorph. He is what happens when you dump the black goo on a pro wrestler. <laughs> It's what what happens when you dump it on fucking Falcor. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, he grew, this is where we go back to church and uh, okay. Is this where I had to really process this. I had to rewind this like four times. Is this where Declan gets peed on? Yes. He's he gets baptized. Yeah, I okay, I was I was like I'm watching this and like I can't have it on my laptop. I had like Dark Souls going next to me and like I'm kind of like I'm you know, my attention's on the movie, but like I'm kind of <laughs> back and forth. And then, like, I look over, and I'm like, what? what? And I catch the last, like, second of him being peed on. I'm like, no, no, go back. And I remind it, like, four times. I'm like, that motherfucker is pissing on this fucking priest. We're gonna, we're gonna make this nation great again. We're gonna, we're gonna worship Rawhead and get pissed on all day and all night. And he's like, and th th this dude is just lapping it up. He's like, yes! Yeah! He's fucking rubbing his bald head with it, like, shining it up with some fucking Rawhead piss. I had to rewind it because I could, it's so far in the distance of the shot because, like, what's, what's, uh, Reverend Coot comes out to look for Declan and he sees him out there on his knees and, like, I was, I couldn't, I just, I just hear a noise I'm like, that is not him getting pissed on. I rewound it and looked. I'm like, that is him getting pissed on. And Coot with the, the, the perfect reaction that anyone that is sane would have, only to have Rawhead do once again do that ridiculous sprint towards him. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, this guy, he, he he's just getting covered in this piss, and he's loving life. He's just fucking, he's, you know, he's rolling around in it. He's fucking, he's patting his fucking cheeks. He's doing snow angels. Oh, yeah. A anyone who listens to this, this, this actually happens. We're not kidding. This is where, to, for me, I'm like, this movie is fucking bonkers. I, this is worth price of admission, in, in my opinion. When you tell somebody about this movie, you're like, oh, yeah, man, you got to see this because this monster pisses on this guy. <laughs> and he loves it. And he loves and it. <laughs> Like, I thought for a second, I was like, am I watching Dead Alive? Like, I thought this movie was kind of like, it, the whole movie played itself pretty straight, and then all of a sudden, like, a dude's getting urinated on, and I was like, okay, we've officially entered the realm of the ridiculous. The back of my head, though, all I could picture was like, that's my mother you're pissing on. And then the rest of the movie basically takes place, like, inside and outside this church, doesn't it? Yeah, mostly, yeah. So... The Reverend says the see you know sees the piss fest going going on and he runs back into uh, he runs back into the church and he calls the cops and the cops are like hello who, who is this is it, is that is that you Reverend and he's like he's like God damn it send the fucking army he's like there's, there's something out here so he hangs up the phone and uh, it takes him a second to fucking like realize he's like I don't know there's, there's, he says there's a there's a horseman pissing on a priest ah uh, apparently somebody's getting pissed on and we got to go down to the church. And then uh, 15 police actors show up. Yeah, out of nowhere, like these fucking SWAT guys with these shitty, like, little fucking, what, it's like, they're like Uzis with, like, the, the, the side clip. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know a lot of different guns, but I don't know what the fuck that is, but I know that it's cheap. It looks like, you know what it looks like? It looks like the guns that uh, Peter Jackson has in Bad Taste. When he pulls it out of his little uh, knapsack and, like, puts it together and fucking starts blasting aliens. Here's an interesting fact. I have still not seen Bad Taste, so there's that. Ooh. That's probably next episode. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, like, Gissing comes back and, like, uh, he... When does he pour gasoline on the ground? Well, he said he does that after it's kind of like you get that big lore dump. Yeah, okay, this is... Yeah, it's, this is when we find out that he's... Oh, he, oh, he's always been here. He's before Christ. So, Coot's running from uh, Rawhead, and Rawhead breaks into the thing but before right before rawhead breaks in uh declan uh grabs him and he, and he basically gives him the rundown of what's going on he gives him the plot of the movie finally yeah he's like he's like all right this is what's supposed to happen and if you missed it here it comes <laughs> i'm only gonna say this i'm only gonna say this once viewers <laughs> howard howard goes in and asks coot but this is previous this happens earlier in the movie he asked to see the uh paris records and when he goes to look at the records, they've been stolen. They're they're gone. So now, at this point, we're reintroduced to the stolen parish records that are just, like, in the basement on the fucking floor. Like, how did you miss them? Like, it's in the same goddamn spot as the rest of the records, and they're just laying yeah, in front a bunch of, of like It's in a bunch of, like, overturned crates with, like, scrolls and crap just all over the place. Yeah, the, the fucking, the scepter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. 3 is down there. <laughs> it's like a Diablo 2 dungeon. Ash walks by the Necromonicon. He's like, "Just excuse me, I've got." That's ah, an elvish blade. Yeah, that's this one. He 
that's I guess that's when they get a brief history of the church and like it, it's got some shady history to it. Yeah, but he holds up this fucking scroll and it's like a, a clearly a picture of like Rawhead like drawn in there. And I'm thinking to myself like, how the fuck did no one remember this in no. the par- and it was like it was like in the parish records. I mean, they also had that stained glass window. The less we were reminded yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. This whole like, this whole situation could be it could be prevented by if there weren't such a bunch of pre- uh, forgetful people in the entire area. Exactly. Yeah, they're just like, ah, fuck it, he's just, ah, he's just, oh, he's old news, they buried him under a dick. <laughs> Somebody sees him, they're like, they're like, oh, now I remember. Oh, yeah, that's right. The dick guy. So then Declan, he brings the, uh, you know, he brings the priest upstairs with the line, <laughs> get upstairs, fuck face, I can't keep God waiting. <laughs> well, that's gonna make you move. Yeah. He is God. But yeah, I mean, you know, then uh, the reverend is under the impression that, uh, you know, Rex can't actually enter the church, and Declan is like, uh, actually, he totally can, and... And then he and then he does and pulls a full, like, dime store monster routine where he's just swatting at the air. Oh, yeah. Yeah! yeah, yeah he's, yeah. like, swatting at the camera, yeah. And, uh, and we guess, uh, you know, that's the end of Coot. Who gets, who gets noogied? Oh, he gets, he gets noogied hard! Who gets, who gets, he gets, he gets noogied, uh, he gets noogied and raspberry Body slammed. And then he gets, yeah, he gets body slammed, and then he gets carried outside and tossed against a headstone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when they go out so Rawhead exits a building with Coot like in his arms like like fucking creature from the Black Lagoon and there's a bunch of cops like line lining the, the perimeter of the church and uh, Gissing's right hand man is there with this fucking dime store SWAT team that they put together out of like the fucking army navy store so the, the, he's like oh, oh don't don't shoot the monster cause we might shoot the we might shoot the reverend and meanwhile Rawhead is like holding the fucking reverend above his head for like a solid two minutes he's just he's just <laughs> holding him there like like you can hear the crowd like yeah body slam yeah and, and JR's in the corner go oh I don't know man he's like he's like I don't know Rawhead's gonna drop him he's gonna drop him <laughs> Raw head with a backbreaker. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's doing the body slam. Here he comes. God of thunder and rock and roll. Uh, yeah, and then just tosses him like a sack of potatoes. That's not an Irish joke, by the way. It's just a phrase. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tosses him off screen. He sails like 50 feet, hits this fucking headstone, and then and then uh, should be killed instantly, but still has enough time to uh, do another plot dump. No, he's in a fucking corner going, I'm not dead yet. I'm feeling better. <laughs> I'm all right. The altar. Oh, never mind. I'm dead. So uh, they open they, just about as they're about to open fire on Rawhead after he throws the Reverend. Uh, Gissing had dumped like he's under the control of Rawhead, so he dumps all this gas underneath the the, the cop cars and lights a match and fucking kaplooey. By the way, he does this in decent lighting in the presence of about twenty people. He's just like walking around dumping <laughs> gas, and everybody's just like. Oh, what are you doing there? Gissing is like, oh, you know, just dumping gas. And And the only guy that notices is like the guy that's clearly been set up the whole movie to be like the idiot policeman. He's like, anybody else smell gas? Not me. Captain, what are you doing? Nothing. This is just, it's gone bad. I have to get rid of it. So, so then he lights himself on fire and like burns in front of Rawhead. And he like sacrifices himself to to, to, to him. And And then it's like straight out of the omen. He's like, oh, you know, for you, for you. And then of course, the second that Rawhead leaves the scene, Howard shows up again. Yeah, Howard's like, it doesn't fucking miss a beat. Like, all that shit goes down, and then Howard's just like, oh, I wonder what's going on here. He misses one beat, and that's protecting his son. That's the only beat he misses. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, the main far, beat. Far and away, that's the biggest beat. <laughs> Dude's all over everything except the safety of his own kid. So he finds out, I, I forget, is it through Declan? No, it's not It's not from Declan. First, he goes over to, because the reverend's on the, on, the, on the front lawn of the oh, church. Right, right. All fucking, you know, co- cozied up against the headstone, and, uh... Uh, right hand number two is there, and he's like, altar, altar. Which then we find out is not an altar. It's just a box with a sheet over it. <laughs> it's a fucking, it's a crate with a with a sheet over it. It's, it's a, a crate at it, the very best. It's a crate that he pulls Rumpelstiltskin out of. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, like, has nobody fucking touched this altar, like ever? Like it only happened within the past few days. Like, oh, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting a fucking, I'm getting a fucking vision here when I touch the altar. But you know, that like never happened before, apparently. Not to mention that there's literally just a cloth on it. No one's taken that off and said, oh shit. Yeah, like it, it just, it looks like they were like, I need to put this somewhere. I'm putting it here, and they put a cloth over it and just forgot about it. They, it's like dealing with the Ark of the Covenant, like the way I deal with laundry. Like I just put it aside. <laughs> 
Ah, just fucking throw it, just in fucking the throw it over here in the hamper. Ah, fucking, I'm, I'm gonna put it next to my fucking tchotchke shit on the shelf. Again, like, this, coo- the coot was like, yeah, this church has been re- rebuilt like six or seven times, but somebody preserved this fucking chest with this, uh, idol in it. Captain, the Visigoths have torn on the church again. Well, leave that crate right where it is, because clearly someone put it there with a purpose. Yeah, everything burned down around it except the crate, and they just didn't touch it. In, in fact, put a new sheet over it. Yeah, and Howard runs in and opens his crate, and it's like, it's some fucking statue or something? Before Howard runs over and opens the crate, he has the pictures again, and he and he puts it together that the stained glass was missing a piece, and the ho- complete fucking glass is intact, except for this one piece of what kills Rawhead, and it's in another part of the church. So... He's like, oh, I gotta find this. I gotta find whatever this thing is to, to stop to stop Rawhead. So he goes over to to the Reverend. Bef- his last dying words are, you know, ah, the altar, the altar. So he goes over to the altar. He puts his hands on it. He's like, holy shit! I'm, f-, you know, my he fucking burns his hand, and he's all, you know, and then he takes like a, a chalice and like opens it up. More dry ice, you know, and it opens up. Fireworks shoot out, and they're just like, oh, congratulations! You're the hundredth customer. Ba-da-da-da. You watch your prize. So he sticks his hand in, and he and he pulls out this fucking rock with a vagina on it this is where the crazy masculine monster is literally defeated by a vagina yeah which is awesome but like hey remember that fertility cult we told you about well we're just bringing that back for the last fucking 10 minutes of this movie boom (laughs) so he grabs the idol he like wrestles with declan for a little while and like fucking burns his face with like a book that was on fire it's like the most yeah it's like a weird out of place like fist fight between two people and like the whole movie's been really tame as far as like action goes and these two have like this short knockdown drag out fight yeah and he's like and, and and Declan's like choking Howard to death and he fucking grabs a book that's on fire and fucking smacks him upside the head with it and he just like lays in like a fucking broken pew and he's like ah my face ah my face and then he like at one point he takes his hand away and he looks at Howard and he's like don't fucking do that ah my face <laughs> no not again <laughs> And this spills out to the graveyard where Rawhead shows up again, and then... Yeah, so Declan skedaddles and then fucking runs into the graveyard where Rawhead is, you know, chilling out, taking taking a piss on somebody. And Rawhead's, and, uh, like, had enough of his shit at this point. Yeah. He just starts, like, taking it to him for whatever reason. Well, he, like, he picks up Declan, and then, like... The whole movie, all the attack sequence has been fairly quick. He picks up Declan and slowly brings him towards his mouth as slow as possible. And then, like, blood just starts spraying out of various locations. Yeah, like, it doesn't actually look like he bit him. And he's loving it. He's like, yeah, give it to me. He's like, oh, yes, more. (laughs) Take me. Give me them raspberries, R. Like, I feel like they, that was the first death they shot, because it was like, oh, that was, that was like, you know, it was okay. It was, it was pretty good. And they're like, oh, that's it. There's, that's our effects budget. Get the same mold, no blood, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck, we just ran out of the budget. Uh, get some, get some, get some fucking, uh, co- uh corpse wax and, so, and some ketchup and we're good. Uh, yeah, then Howard, so Howard aims this big old, uh, the statue at Rawhead. Nothing happens. He just kind of gets, like, smacked around. Yeah, what is, what is it? He's like, he's like, he's like, oh, come on, come on, baby. Come on, come on, baby. Do it, do it, do it. Give it to daddy. And then his wife pulls a full Lois Lane from Batman vs Superman where she teleports out of nowhere and is like, that's his mother's name. Except she grabs the idol. <laughs> and Frawhead's like, oh my god, your name's Martha? <laughs> Shit! His first spoken line of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, she grabs the idol. Apparently it only works when it's in a woman's hands. And she defeats him with the power of overlay effects. Lots of lots of like lightning and fireworks. And then and then the image of one of the Valerians from Space Mutiny pops up. And then he gets terrified. <laughs> <laughs> they took the effects from uh, Ernest Scared Stupid and just like dropped it over the scene. It's just lots of like, it's at the end of Hellraiser 1 where it gets kind of silly where Kirsty is just firing lasers out of the fucking box at <laughs> and, and Cenobites. <laughs> It's the same thing. Like that's like a that's like a it's like a Clive Barker trope. Like, all right, we have to have something that shoots fucking lasers out of it. Although, and, although ha- somehow somehow this looks better than Hellraiser One does at the end because the Hellraiser One it looks like someone did it in MS Paint. But it also goes on for like thirty seconds. Yeah, I mean, like, she, a, like a solid minute maybe. And and Hellraiser is a great fucking movie, so you can kind of forgive that sequence. And this, you're like, where did this effects budget come from? <laughs> so she's shooting like beams of blue estrogen out of this fucking vagina idol, and it's it's just like wow. Whacking fucking Rex left and right. And, uh, you know, he starts to have, like, erectile dysfunction. Yeah, his hair turns white. Yeah, like, he becomes geriatric Rex. <laughs> Old head Rex. Limp dick Rex is his name now. And now this is also the scene where you actually have that callback to that old woman from earlier. Because... Is ha- the- oh, my God. Yeah, okay, Howard I just sees, realized. For whatever reason, Howard has this vision of 
when his wife's holding up the idol of like this red cloaked figure that was also in the stained glass window and the old woman from earlier was oh, wearing a red the same kind of cloak. So, wow, that's the that's like the shittiest foreshadowing I've ever seen. Yeah. I, yeah, but it just dawned on me like all right, so she so she really is a direct descendant. You can literally blink and miss that. Yeah, but I mean does that imply that that old woman is just super old or she doesn't exist well, and that the wife is a descendant because they kind of play up that oh well you're from Ireland isn't that well, funny like well no throughout the movie th- I mean Howard totally says that to her and she, she goes his wife goes oh oh there's something so familiar about that face and she's like oh and Howard's like you think it's one of your your ancestors or what you know not ancestors but you know what I mean relatives or relatives whatever. yeah 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 holy shit I didn't even like think of that yeah I I, I don't so, know so I, don't, I don't know wait wait so you're telling me that this fucking old lady that broke them up like kissing is the one who put Rawhead in the ground in the first place that's what I'm saying it's either that and she's just super old or it's just she doesn't actually exist and it was like some kind of like premonition I, guess, I don't know how maybe? you want to read that deeply into Rawhead Rex, but that's what I took away from it. I don't know. But anyway, she's like, fuck the patriarchy, and, and they and they fucking blast him into a fucking grave. And he's all fucking old, and a, a giant slab of rock falls on him, which I'm not sure. Is it a, is it the tombstone? Yeah. It is the tombstone. I see. It better not be that big old pillar that was in the beginning of the movie, because that's an ad- entirely different location. No, it's like, uh, it's almost like one of those uh, graves that has like the stone uh panel on top he, he kind of falls through that and then that falls on top of him oh okay and then she of course drops the idol in there so god forbid he ever escapes again you're fucked so all right so it, it's all it's all sunshine and rainbows and and you know rawhead's dead and and uh howard and his wife you know make up and kiss and 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 leave with their daughter or you know not Wh- with which should have been the end of the movie yeah y- you think it would be the end of the movie but it's not but no we got the obligatory like final attempt at a jump scare which is like out of places because like this movie hasn't done this movie doesn't do jump scares at all and then like the, the 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 kid who was traumatized like goes and visits whose grave? I don't even remember whose grave he went to visit. It's his brother Andy. Oh, his brother. Yeah, I forgot it's his brother Andy puts flowers on and like doesn't even pop out at that grave. Pops out of a grave in the foreground directly in front of you. I'm like, what? What's the connection there? <laughs> But he still looks old. Yeah, and it's just like, ah, Rawhead Rex 2. It's coming. It's coming, I promise. Coming, it's coming never. That's what's happening. So, yeah, the movie's over. Um, it's, uh... So I've been like re- I've been reading I've been there, I went to Clive Barker's website and I just like there's an, there's an entire page devoted to Clive Barker on Rawhead Rex. And it's just it's just like just paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of him just shitting on this movie. Dude, they totally fucked this up. Like I so I I've read the short story and I have the comic book adaption too and So uh, okay, I got to ask. Is this like a comparison to like uh the Lawnmower Man short story and movie, how there's a massive disconnect. Yeah, it's exactly. It, it's not well. It's not exactly like that because, like in Lawnmower Man, uh, in the in the short story, it's like this devil. It's like it's literally like a demon. It's like a it's a it's like a satyr or some shit like that who just like is mowing the lawn with his mind. Yeah, and he like eats grass and does all this weird shit, and it's it's creepy as fuck. Um, and then like you know you have Jeff Fahey in uh in the movie, <laughs> who I am convinced, and we'll talk about this. I'm sure another day. I'm. Con- convinced that that job is the basis for simple jack from tropic thunder i i would i wouldn't disagree with you man i mean it could be he it, 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 the the phrase and not to not to anger anybody full retard has to come from lawnmower man <laughs> joe because he is he, like that mo- you, that performance would be unpassable today you put that in theaters and people go what the fuck is this yeah man but hey hey you gotta give credit where credit is due man he invented the fucking the reboot animated series that's what he did yeah um but yeah it seems like there was a again the same kind of disconnect where a studio got a hold of a script and then just said yeah fuck the source material we're just gonna like they combine a separate idea they had with this and made this just disaster it's a prime example of of how the artist's work gets totally like twisted and and distorted uh from from its original source material uh when the producers you know kick in uh and yeah i have a quote right here where it says uh this is from barker it says monster and the rampage stories are about the phallic principle large males running around terrorizing women basically i wrote a story about a 10-foot prick who goes in a rampage i even put in the title rawhead rex uh and he said like what's going to just what's going to destroy a 10-foot dick so i made this guy absolutely scared of uh vagina dentata so he's bested and says it is it'll be bested by the image of rampant female sexuality so that's what the movie's supposed to be about and that doesn't come in until the end and even then it's like you can you can pick up on it if you're looking for it but if you're not looking for it, you're like, what the fuck is happening? Well, but- it's almost like it contradicts itself then, because then you have the, the, the scene where he doesn't kill the woman that's pregnant, uh, and he's defeated by, I think her name was Elaine, the wife of Howard. But, uh, you know, he still rips that woman out of that trailer, and she's fully nude. So, like, how does that even, like, 
be consistent with it. So the yeah, the message is completely lost in translation, and not just lost, it's just completely botched. But not only that, but like th- when when the old woman walks in between them when they're kissing, like is trying to deter them <laughs> from kissing each other. So mm-hmm. so where's that rampant sexuality? It's uh, uh, I, like I. I didn't like I said this movie has popped up on my radar if like all half my life and I had no idea what it was and then I watched it for the first time a few weeks back when we were still trying to figure out the scheduling and then I watched it again today and I was like what the fuck is this Okay so all you know all of this aside like ripping it apart and shit like I still love this fucking movie I kind of appreciate it for just how silly it is It's just it's just it's garbage and I love it because I was I was laughing hard at some points during this movie i liked it uh, and if, you, and if, and if she, like if the bad horror movie can get that out of me then i'm kind of on board one of the best parts is is when howard's in the police station and and the and the cop is like oh can i get you a cup of tea and he's like how about you go fuck yourself <laughs> and he's like and the cop's just like ha ah, ha pass it along to the other guys but that's the kind of stuff that like actually makes this movie watchable yeah. i feel like if you didn't have a lot of these like lighthearted moments in these like pseudo fucked up situations yeah. it would just be really really bland i actually thought uh i think the actress who plays the wife is kind of like giving it her everything and she's surrounded by people who are just like mediocre <laughs> the inspectors definitely phoned it in um the guy who plays howard what's his name oh shit i saw his name too it's not david dukes he i think he i think he's given it his all too i mean he, i mean he range he, he's got a wide range in this movie like He's really good in some scenes. Like he brings that emotion. Like when when like Robbie dies and stuff, and he goes to the cops. Like I believe that that guy is going through some 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 turmoil with losing his kid. It's also weird to see a horror movie protagonist who's not either a like a young boy or a, like a adolescent to young adult woman. It's weird to see a horror movie protagonist who is like a middle aged dad. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> He's, he just he's he's just a he's a regular ass dude who's probably in his late thirties, early forties, who has to go fight some kind of tremendous evil, and that's something I don't see very often. For no reason, until 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 it's until it's his son dying. Yeah, I came and come with a different example. I came and come with an example of something like that happening in a horror movie. I don't think I know of anything similar. See, that's the thing. I can think of movies. I can think of movies like where, movies where they tell you right at the beginning. Yeah, no, I like like that role. Like I said, where it's like it's an older dude uh, who's kind of in the the hero position. Oh well. Oh oh. Uh, um, what was the one we just watched? Um, the werewolf movie. Um. <clears throat> Oh, um... The one you just told me about before, or something else? No, the, it's, uh, without remembering the name, it was about an older guy who he, was blind. He's a Vietnam veteran. Oh, fuck. Late phases, oh, late, phases. Oh, uh, late phases. Late phases, late phases. Late phases. That was fucking, fucking fantastic. great. And, uh, he's... Th- I mean, there you go. There's a, there's a really good example. You know, you have this older guy, this older Vietnam vet who's fucking blind and starts taking out werewolves. That is a good movie. I love that movie because I tell people that premise, they go, that sounds ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, but it's played totally straight. Totally fucking 100% and straight. And you have fucking Tom Noonan in it, man. Yeah, and it's like, it elicits some genuine emotional reactions out of people. But you're right, it, it, it's not that common. With this, though, like, I, I don't know, it's... Like, I liked Howard, liked his wife. Uh, I thought Howard, like, his occasional explosive uh, overacting was very amusing. Oh, he's chewing up that scenery, dude. <laughs> and a few of those scenes. Yeah, yes, exactly. I, yeah. I like Declan just because he was so off the wall. Like, you didn't know what was going to come out of his mouth next. The guy has, like, five lines in the movie. Well, every line's great. I also didn't peg him for a villain until about halfway through. I was like, oh, he's going to be a bad guy. Okay. And I think this movie kind of has some cool, uh, some lore goodies that are kind of interesting because I'm kind of just, uh, the idea of like a pagan god that's buried in the fucking dirt is pretty interesting, but we don't get too much of that. We just get bits of it here and there. The idea is cool, but like, I, I just, you know, you just never fully buy it. Yeah. And it's also, it's like with having Clive Barker's name attached to it, like I would go, if I didn't know anything shit about this movie, I would go and go and like, oh shit, Clive Barker, I'm going to get some nutty stuff. Yeah. And I think, well that, I think that's what they were banking on. Uh, and then it's just, it's the most like toned down Barker I've ever seen. Oh. <laughs> Oh, absolutely and it's not even his fault it's it's you know again they, he submitted a draft and like was just basically excluded from the filming process it seems uh i also liked how and i i mean obviously other horror movies do this but i liked how rex actually seemed like he was kind of in charge whereas like you know you're jason and you're michael myers like they're doing they're doing they're putting work in but they never really seem like they are in charge or like have a plan like it seemed like they're always doing it for someone else yeah, it yeah. seemed like, you know, not that we ever totally got the girth of it, but it seemed like Rex had a point to what he was trying to do. Rex is, I mean, the whole, I guess the, the supposed or intended gist of his character was like, he is literally a large and in charge fucking, you know, beefed out uh, masculine demon. He's Viagra with teeth. Yeah, yeah, exa- there you go. Like I said, it was fun, but obviously this movie is uh, fundamentally shit. <laughs> Oh, it's a piece of garbage, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. No, I. Oh God, it's. it's 
I can't wait to tell people about this at work. Well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, w- would you recommend this movie to a certain crowd? Yeah, I like. I work with a bunch of I, at the animal hospital I work at. I work with a bunch of people who are just so not in the same crowd I am. So, and okay. every once in a while, they do ask me about like movies I've watched. I'm like, I'll totally bring this up because I think the sea, of, the sea of confused faces, I can't wait to see. Oh man, what about you? Hmm. I don't know. I would recommend it if you're into like cheesy horror movies, but if you were just asking to watch a movie, I don't know, it'd be kind of a hard sell. It, it, you, it's something you recommend it to people who are like, you walk up to you go, do you know what the video nasties are? They go, yes. I go, okay, watch Rawhead Rex. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I am that guy. Like, I think that I did it to both of you. I was like, hey, you guys want to watch a fucking stupid movie? Here it is. Yeah, you did it to me twice. Uh, Monster in the Closet still very fresh in my head. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do Monster in the Closet. We do. No, yeah, that's we have to do Monster in the Closet. That's it, We're going to do a Paul Walker a Paul Walker tribute episode with Monster in the Closet. With, uh, with that dude from The Thing who's got eyebrows that look like fucking diving boards. Uh- Wilford Brimley? No, not uh, uh damn it, what's his name? The one who the one who makes the speech about being tied to the couch. He's also a monster in the closet and like he is like Is I, he? Yeah. Yeah, he's the general. He's yes, the general. He is. And like I, the one thing I noticed watching the thing, I'm like his eyebrows are ridiculous. Yeah, they're like they're like fanned up. <laughs> exactly. Uh yeah, I guess I would recommend Rawhead Rex, but like I said, only to certain people. I wouldn't recommend it to someone who's probably very casual about what they see and what they watch. I would just go fuck with people and I'd be like, here, here's this movie. Go watch this. What's it about? I'm not gonna tell you. Oh man, it's so good. And then they come back and be like, there's a fucking demon pissing on this guy. <laughs> you didn't tell me a movie with a monster dick. <laughs> I know, it was intentional. <laughs> so that's it. That's Rawhead Rex. If you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Follow us at Movie Dumpster on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also check out our sister podcast, The Phantom Zone, hosted by our very own Connor McGraw. You can find them at phantomzonepodcast.wordpress.com. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. Yeah, I'll get the fuck out of here. And you'll be very fucking glad. 